cloud computing cloud computing now is delivering the computing services over the internet why it become more and more popular eh? it become uh, most in demand in the market because it is very cheap that actually because uh, the security parameters uh, the cloud provider usually provide the highest security parameters yeah so if you subscribe the uh, subscribe the infra at the cloud uh, cloud service provider you don't have to invest so much in order for you to have a very high standard of the security features you can share yeah, the infra of the uh, security features among the cloud su subscribers so therefore it's very recommended for you to go for the cloud and it become more and more popular uh, in um, uh, today yeah today uh, that's the way we do it so, uh, most of the organization are actually hosting their servers in the cloud environment yeah uh, so uh, in the cloud environment because you you don't have to invest so much in the security services therefore who, how do you want to how do you want to want to access the security that has at the cloud services by the service provider. So therefore, this ISO IC 3707 and ISO IC 3708 are the uh, the standards that have the requirements uh, to f as a guideline for the service uh, cloud service provider and cloud service uh, users uh, to to use as the guideline eh, for for uh, for this organization to ensure that the cloud service uh, the cloud services features are secured as much as possible yeah so it's very advantage if you go for the uh, uh, of the cloud services because um, because it's very uh, cheap and it has a very high security uh, parameters okay this cloud, uh, this cloud computing services including the service host, uh, hosting the storage the databases the networking the software uh, the analytics and intelligence within the cloud computing services. As I had shared with you just now, uh, those are the reasons why we actually going for the cloud computing security. Uh, as we are actually, when you host your servers uh, at the cloud service provider, uh, meaning that you are going to use the internet. Yeah. So when the uh, cloud computer services over the internet okay so therefore you are very vulnerable to the cyber attacks yeah? and recently many organizations have been attacked by the ransomware okay so therefore it's very important for the cloud uh, the, for the cloud uh, service provider to to have the minimum uh, minimum securities that have been laid out in the ISO 27017 and ISO 27018 Okay, let me share with you on these uh, two standards. Yeah? These two standards, ISO IC 2707, ISO IC 2708, provide guidelines yeah, for information security controls that are applicable to provision and use of the cloud services. And as I said just now, this is part of the ISO IC 2007 family of standards. Okay, And uh, in order for you to be uh, to comply to ISO IC 27017 and ISO IC 27018, you have to comply to other requirements within the ISO IC 27002 also because this ISO IC 27017 and ISO IC 27018 are the extension of the ISO IC 27002 that, is, that are special for the cloud service provider and, service, uh, and cloud service users. Okay? Uh, and I, I again would like to emphasize that this uh, ISO IC, uh, in general, the ISO IC 37000 family standards is uh, intend to secure the information of your organization. Eh? So, also known as the SMS family of ISO 27001 of standards. So, these are the list of standards as I shared with you just now. So, just for your uh, information, this uh, ISO. Uh, ISO in Geneva is actually they are only coordinating the publication of the the development of the ISO standards. Yeah, the actually uh, the experts all over the world are the ones who actually develop the standards. Same with the IEC. IEC is the International Electrotechnical Commission. 
uh, it is an international standard of organization that prepare and publish international standard for all electrical, electronic and related technologies. Uh, the ISO standards are actually voluntary standards, but the IEC standards are mostly the regulated standards. And then these IT standards uh, actually can belong to the IEC and also can belong to the ISO. So therefore, both ISO and this IEC organization claim that the IT standards belong to them. Therefore, to be fair, eh, uh, they, they have a harmonized uh, committee that is called ISO IC JTC1. Eh? This ISO IC JTC1 is actually developing all the IT standards, including the ISO IC 27,000 family standards. And for your information, there is also another organization which we call it ITU. The one is for the telecommunication. So there are uh, there are so many uh, international organizations for standardization, but these are the three major organizations for the uh, uh, standardization which is ISO, IEC and ITU but this one ISO, IEC, JTC1 is the uh, special joint technical committee to develop the, all the IT standards yeah? but uh, so far there is only one technical committee uh, exists between the ISO and IEC so let us go to the ISO, IEC 27018 for your information this ISO 27018 it was the first international standard which was first published in the year of 2014 yeah so this iso standard is about the privacy in cloud computing services which was promoted by the industry it was created in 2014 as an addendum only to iso ic 2701 yeah so this iso 2701 it is the first international code practice for cloud privacy it helps cloud service provider who process personal identifiable information PII to assess risk and implement controls for protecting the PII. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, in particular, this document of ISO 27018 specify guideline based on the, as I said just now, based on the ISO IC 27002, taking into consideration the regulatory requirements for the protection of PII, which can be applicable within the context of information security risk environment or a provider of public cloud services. So, if you want to be uh, to be uh, complied to the ISO 27018, you must first comply the ISO IC 27002, and then there are like uh, six or seven extra uh, controls that you have to comply in order for you to be uh, to be recognized as complying to the ISO 27018. Yeah? This document is applicable for your information. It is applicable to all types of uh, organization and to all sizes of organization including public and private companies yeah uh, government entities for not for not for profit organization which provide information processing services SPII processes by cloud computing under contract to other organization like the uh, like the Jabatan Pendaftaran Negara yeah they are actually hosting the PII like the GIM Jabatan Immigration Malaysia yeah so those are the ones that actually Hosting the uh, personal information, hosting the personal identifiable information, yeah, because uh, this uh, personal identifiable information is very very uh, legit, uh, is very very uh, legitimate. Eh? People can uh, people can steal your uh, your personal information in order for you for them to act as yourself. So, therefore, it's very important for the PII to be uh, highly secure. This document, uh, ISO 27017, uh, as I said just now, uh, is very important for those companies that are actually hosting the PII processes. Yeah? Okay, let us go to 27017. This ISO IC 27017 uh, dated 2015 give guideline for information security control applicable to the provision and use of cloud services by providing additional controls with implementation guidance that specifically relate to cloud services. Yeah. Uh, this uh, 27017 is, uh, is equivalent to 
ITUT S1631 ya yeah, so those who the telecommunication company, uh, companies or organization are very familiar with the ITU ITUT standards ya yeah. so therefore in order for you to understand how it is equivalent so this standard is actually equivalent to the ITUT X.1631 okay so for your information this ISO 27017 suggests seven new controls yeah numeration of this control is compatible with the structure of the previous ISO 27001 standard and ISO 2702 standard dated 2013 we, uh, it is not yet compatible with, uh, with the, the uh, 2022 version yeah? because uh, it, uh, for this uh, 2015 ver version is actually compatible to ISO 2702 2013 version because now the 2702 has actually uh, the, the committee the ISO has actually published a latest version which is uh, which has been published on the 15th of February 2000 22 yeah. so uh, but uh, for your information on the 28th of uh, January 20, 2022 ISO 27017 it has been uh, published yeah, uh, for, for it to be compatible to the newer version of 2702 2022 version okay so this uh, ISO 2701 includes additional information for information security controls that are necessary for protecting data in the cloud. It also adds several new ones and enhance the standards applicability to the cloud computing industry. This ISO 27017 provides guidelines for both providers and users of the cloud services. It is not only for the cloud service provider but it also can be used by the cloud service users which are subscribing the uh, the cloud services uh, provided by the cloud service provider yeah? okay the difference of these two standards yeah so just now we have two standards uh, uh, actually uh, the 27018 was actually published first before the ISO 27017 because the first edition of the ISO IC 27018 was published in 2014 and then later uh, the ISO IC uh, JTC1 IC 27 published another standard on the cloud services which is the 27017 in year 2015 yeah so what's the difference of these two i saw that uh, i saw i see 27017 uh, is actually about the information generic controls for, for cloud services and i saw i see 27018 is specifically developed for protecting privacy data in the cloud yeah so both uh, standards are cloud services uh, standard for cloud users and cloud service provider so if you are not the service provider the cloud service provider but you are subscribing to the cloud uh, the, to the cloud services you also can be uh, can be certified not certif uh, can uh, can comply to the requirement within this uh, both standards yeah both are extension of the 2701 standard and both are based on control within the 2702 standard yeah so in order for you to be certifiable you ha you must first to be certified on the ISO IC 2701 then only you can uh, you can comply to the both these two standard 2707 and 2708 so in your certificate the it will be written as uh, ISO IC 27 standard uh, certified and conformant to these two standards. So that is how it goes. Yeah, you cannot be certified direct to the 2707 and the or direct to 27018. You must first be certified to ISO IC 2701 standard. Then only you can be certified to these two standards. Yeah. So when you are publishing in your website, you are actually conform to the 37 and 37018, then you can convince your stakeholder that your data in the cloud services are very, very secure. Yeah. So that is the advantage for you to be complied to these standards. For you to uh, for you to convince your stakeholders that your uh, your data in the cloud services are very very Secured. For your information, there was a uh, there had once happened eh, uh, a tragedy, we call it a disaster, 
uh, which happened in Singapore way back in 2018. Yeah. So at that time, uh, the the vendor is actually uh, migrating the data from the MOH of Singapore. Not MOH of Malaysia. We know that Singapore are very advanced from us. Yeah. So at that time, they are migrating the data. Uh, of the MOH of Singapore, it, it was actually this is not a secret because it had been published yeah, in the media. So they actually uh, migrating the data from the MOH server to the cloud, yeah, and then leakage happened. Yeah. So the uh, the data of the patients or the data of the MOH had been leaked at that time. That is a very very major disaster. So we don't want that to happen to our organization. Therefore, it's very important for you to comply to the requirement or to the control that has been laid out in these two standards. Yeah. So it's very highly recommended for you to to be uh, to conform to these two standards. Okay. Because you don't want to that kind of disaster to happen to the to the to the data of our organization. We should secure our data. Uh, our data that is hosted in the cloud service provider. So uh, here I would like to share with you on the training uh, and consultancy on these two standards. Yeah, for your information, as other standard, we, we provide both. Yeah, we provide both training and consultancy in house. Uh, and public. I mean the training for in-house and public. Okay, uh, but uh, besides that, we are also providing the uh, in-house uh, training and consultancy. So we have three types of uh, package uh, available at Sirim SDS. Yeah, first one is the introduction. This introduction is only on the is only uh, for one day. Yeah, because uh, I will talk from you will. <laughs> We will talk from uh, morning until afternoon on the requirements within the 27.002 yeah, and both standards 27.018 and 27.017. Uh, so this is only a one day uh, training. Okay, uh, I will share with you on the overview of the three standards. Uh, in the three standards. For your information, there are 114 uh, requirements in the 27.02. Uh, for the 2013 version, but for the 2022 version, they have different, eh? different that uh, we are yet to, we are yet to offer. Okay, uh, and then we have another training, uh, which is called understanding and implementing. It's also the same on the ISO IC 2702, 2717, 2718, but this one is more detail yeah? it's going to be two main days where we will have some hands on yeah so that's the difference of these two uh, these two trainings uh, and consultancy okay uh, the, uh, the the last but not least is the new on the internal audit yeah so uh, we are going to guide you uh, the uh, we will share with you on the requirement of the standard, the three standards, yeah, 27, again, 3702, 3718, 3707. And at the same time, we are going to share the audit techniques in order for you to audit yeah, the organization based on these three standards. Okay, uh, This one, we are going to give you exercises on the uh, understanding of the requirements within these trends these three standards and exercises on the audit technique also okay so for your information you are providing the both uh, both types of training online and face to face yeah uh, either we, we, we during the mco or after the mco as for now the um, our condition is very uh, is very not stable yeah we thought that there is no more mco but we never know because uh, recently, there there had been an MCO in China, Shenzhen. Ah, uh, so just recently, I don't know if they have uh, ended it up yet. So, so that's why we here are very um uh we are very uh, we are very what accommodating to the to the needs of our customer. Okay.